I'm Dumb Truck DS, and you've found the quick start tutorial for Trench Broom 2.0. If you're a beginner or you're coming back to mapping from many years ago, back when Quake was released, this is the right tutorial to watch. By the end of it, you'll be making maps. All the files mentioned in this tutorial are linked below. So our first step is to make a brand new directory that we're gonna devote solely to making maps. We don't wanna use our gaming folder to make maps. It's just a better practice to keep things separated. I've called mine Quake Dev. The important thing about this folder, it needs to be in the root of your main drive or any drive, it could be F, but it needs to be at the root of that drive. So it would be C slash Quake Dev. Inside of Quake Dev, let's make a folder called id1, and inside of that folder, make a maps folder. Go back to Quake Dev. Let's make a tools folder, a wads folder, and a working folder. And go ahead and make a trench broom folder. I'm using release candidate six. So in order to play Quake and edit Quake, we need to have a couple files from your original game directory. And we're gonna place those in the Quake Dev folder. So you're gonna come up here and we're gonna search for id1 slash pack opac. I'm gonna right click, open file location. And there is my Steam apps directory, etc. My Quake id1. We're gonna copy these guys. So you go to Quake Dev id1, and I already have mine here, but this is where you'd paste those. Pack files go in the id1 directory. That'll allow you to play the game. This is all the graphics and models and everything. Now we're gonna need five additional tools to help us create a map. First of all, Trench Broom. I've downloaded the most recent version. I've put it inside of this folder, so we're ready to go with that. Uh, let's go to the wads next. And what a wad is, is a texture collection. These are the textures you're gonna use in your map. And this is called Start Wad because it's from the start map in the original game. So that goes in wads. In tools, we want to put two things. We want to put Eric W. Tools. Um, <laughs> I've, I've got the new version right here. I'm just going to go ahead and unzip that right there. I like to keep multiple versions of the tools, just in case. Next, we need Necros's Compiling GUI. I made a folder that matches the name of the zip, and I just unzip these three items in there. So there's your compiling. And last but not least, you'll need Quakespasm. Quakespasm, you just unzip into your new Quake Dev directory. So before we start transferring, let's open up Quakespasm and uh, make sure it's loading and, and you have your settings the way you want them to play. So now that Quakespasm's set up, let's go ahead and launch Trench Broom. In order to set up your settings, uh, you need to hit new map and we're gonna go open preferences here. This is where you would set your keyboard and mouse, invert your mouse look here. A couple different things that we'll get to later, but let's go ahead and find Quake here. First of all, let's set the game path and we are going to select Quake Dev. We're gonna configure engines and now we're gonna set a new profile for Quakespasm. We're gonna set the path and we'll just highlight that. This is our new profile. When you start a new map, this is what you'll see. Go ahead and choose standard if it's not already selected. And we're gonna come up to Trench Broom. And so first of all, we wanna to go to Entity. And these should show up automatically because what we just set up the game directory and Trench Broom looks and finds all these assets that you can put into your maps. So if for some reason this doesn't show up, something's wrong with your preferences. So the next thing you'll wanna set up is the Start WAD file. So you go to the Face tab in the Inspector. You're gonna go down to the bottom, Texture Collections. This will wake up and we're gonna hit add and we're gonna navigate to start wad. I have other things in here. Absolute is what I always use, but there are other selections uh, for other needs. Hit okay. And now you can see all those textures right there. Before we get started, I wanna show you the Trench Broom Manual. I went ahead and made a shortcut to the Trench Broom Manual on my desktop because it's just so useful. You can find it under Trench Broom Manual and just look for the index HTML. I copied that to my desktop. Almost everything I've looked for has been in here. Explains everything in minute detail. It's a great manual. All right, let's get back to the editor. Use the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. You right click to pan your view. So I'm holding down the right mouse button and panning. You hold down the middle mouse button to move sideways up and down. You can use the WASD keys to fly around like you're playing a shooter. You can hit Y and that'll also put you in first person mode. I don't use that, but that's an option for you. You hit escape to disable. Let's say you're in that mode. If you're in Y, hit escape. And that's the same with all the tools up here. So I'm gonna select a brush by left clicking on the brush. Brushes are like Lego bricks. They're how you build levels. So this is selected now. And when you hover over it, it gives you the dimensions. One more thing you can do is Alt right click and drag to orbit around a selection. 
you notice it's going to orbit right around where my mouse was. If my mouse is over here, it's going to kind of orbit and swing wide. My mouse is here. It's going to flip around like so. Other ways of getting around, say this is selected and you get kind of confused and turned around. You can hit control and U and it'll snap to the currently selected item. We'll go to the face inspector and I'm just going to pick this brown brick color city. I'll just do this guy. Let's go to the entity inspector and we're going to search for info underscore player and that'll show us all our little info players. Every map needs to have an info player start. So let's drag him on there. And you notice when you drag him onto a brush, he automatically kind of lands on it and it intersects with the face of the brush. He's selected now so I can orbit around him. If you want to raise him up, you're gonna hold down Alt and that'll lock the access to the Z axis. This is X and Y, just left click and drag, and then Alt click up and down. This is where you change the grid size. And uh, for different modes and things, you're gonna want larger sizes. I'd like to drag this out to be 512 on every side. So 512 units there, 512 units, hello, there. In order to reshape a brush, you're gonna hold down Shift and it will highlight faces of the brush that you can manipulate. And so I had simply dragged it out. Now we're gonna copy the brush. So I'm gonna hold down Control and I'm gonna drag it. When you left click and drag selections around, you are limited to the X and Y axes. And you see these spikes, they help you align things. So pay attention to those guys. I'm gonna go ahead and snap that over there. I'm gonna raise it up. I'm gonna hold down Alt and raise this up a little bit. I'm holding down shift and I'm gonna close this down because we don't need it to the wall to be that big. So now this is gonna become our wall. I'm gonna extend this up and now I would like to change the texture on there. So let's go to face. Let's make it the funky rock color. To duplicate items, you can hit control D. You saw it flash there. That means it's duplicated in place. Right here, I'm manipulating the selection with the arrow keys but I'm gonna keep it there for a second. I'm gonna hold down Alt and I'm gonna hit left arrow and this is gonna rotate this. And I'm manipulating this with the keyboard and you're gonna hear this a lot. Another way to duplicate is to just simply control drag like I did earlier. So I did that with the other wall and I can control drag this guy and now we have four walls. I'm gonna undo that and I'm gonna show you something kind of cool when you're making a, a box. I'm gonna select all three of these by holding down control. So control, con click, control, click, and you can deselect by control clicking as well. I'm going to duplicate this in place. So there's a big duplicate of these three brushes. I'm gonna turn off texture lock and I'm gonna flip the selection vertically. Alt arrow to spin this around. I'm gonna use the arrow keys to kind of put it in position. So now we've got an enclosed space. So now I'm changing the grid size by hitting the number keys on the keyboard. So one is one, two is two, three is four, and so on. I usually use eight, 16, and 32 to build maps. All right, so now we have our box room. It's really ugly. I'm gonna change the ceiling texture. I'm gonna select the brush. Let's just make it wood. The important thing to note is that all these seams are connected. Pretend your level is a glass or a container of water and the empty space inside of the volume needs to contain that water. If any of these are open, you're gonna have what's called a leak and we're gonna get the leaks later. All right, I have my ceiling. I'm gonna add a feature to this so we can get some kind of dramatic lighting. And I'm just gonna kind of just randomly put some columns over here. To apply a uh, texture to a brush, you just click on it. So I'm gonna actually, let's change it. Change it to this guy. And uh, that's ugly, so let's do this. I'm gonna control drag this guy and make a copy of him. Now let's add a light. Lights are entities, so you go to the entity inspector and you scroll down, or you can just type in light. It's gonna show, it's gonna filter all different kinds, but I wanna use a torch. I'm gonna drag this in, and the beautiful thing about trench broom is, is once it hits that brush, it's gonna stop. I wanna copy and paste this torch. You can uh, control drag just like a brush if you want. What I'm gonna do is use the keyboard and hit control and left arrow. And now that guy's duplicated and he's right on the same plane. So I'm gonna put it behind it though. So see it's inside the brush, we don't want that. Oh, and it's kind of sticking out. So let's go to a smaller grid size. Now it'll line up correctly. So I know it's not beautiful, but there's a light over there and a light over there, and you're gonna kind of see the difference when we finish it up. I'm gonna go ahead and put a weapon in there. Let's put a grenade launcher. That's always my favorite to put in test maps. And let's put in a couple zombies. Type in zombie. He shows up over here. This guy's over here, and this guy's over here. They're all facing the wrong way, so let's control click 
to select all of them. I'm gonna hold down Alt, I'm gonna use the left arrow key or the right arrow key, let's go right. And it spins it around and now they're facing the player. Let's type in light. This little box represents a point light. And drag that in here. And it kind of goes to the floor. It's not where I want it. I want it up high. Holding down Alt. And I want it closer to the wall over here. So you can see the spikes really come into play here. I'm going to go up even higher. And now we're going to save our map. You need to save your map into id1 maps. I call this zombie map. All right, so zombie map is saved. Now I'm going to minimize trench broom. And now we're going to get to our compiling. We need to set up our compiling program, but it only is a couple steps. So let's get to that. We'll go to Quake Dev, go to Tools. I'm going to go to the compiling GUI. There are just a couple things that we need to set up here. Settings, folder setup. You want to find the tools folder. Now they don't mean your tools folder that you name tools, but this is the tools that you downloaded. So we need to go to Quake Dev. We're going to go to Tools, select the new version of Eric's Tools, and the actual programs that we're going to reference are in bin. We don't need to deal with any command line arguments. The map doesn't need to be converted. So all this is good to go. PTS is good to go. Two more settings we have to deal with our working folder. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this and unfortunately have to go back to quake dev, just select that output folder. Let's pick uh, maps. So we're going to go to quake dev it one maps. We want to pick our source map, so we need to navigate to our map. Quake Dev, id1, maps, zombie map. There's our map. One last thing before we compile. Quake Engine. It's not going to be C Quake EXE. We need to navigate to Quake Dev, Quake Spasm. Hit that. Again, these are three different programs that run to render, quote unquote, render your map. It's called compiling. There's all kinds of options you can play around with these. You can pause each thing, especially for troubleshooting. This is really important to pause them. I'm going to have it pause after compiling, but I am also going to have it run Quake. You can either use this or I just simply hit Control C and there it has compiled the map and it's waiting for you to continue on. Okay, we're launching the map. There's the grenade launcher. Oops. Kill these guys. All right, there's the point light we made. There's the first torch. It's really kind of ugly and flat. And back here, same thing, but there's some dramatic lighting going on over here. So Quake, the beautiful thing about Quake is the lighting in my opinion. I know there seems like a lot of steps, but all the hard stuff's done. Now we can just focus on mapping and trench broom and learning a lot more about the interface. So this has been the Quick Start video. You can also download a PDF with all the steps and all the keyboard shortcuts found in this video. Thanks for hanging in there. Come back for more Quake.